All right, welcome back. Let's look at Kennedy's question. So Kennedy asks two questions. How do you handle the issues of individualism and coercion in a cell church, which can be negative? So uh, I've just put the meaning of coercion here, the practice of persuading someone to do something by using force or threats. Now, um, when it comes to individualism, uh, you know, we're very clear. Some some of the things that we always uh, do is we when we are training our cell group leaders, we we tell them that it's you know our our vision. We tell them why we are doing what we're doing, uh, and uh, we enforce that vision, that mission into them. Right. So that is why um, you know we have certain criteria to become a cell church leader. Right. So uh, as I've mentioned, right, you. You have to be a part of APC for one year, uh, and then six months you have to be part of a cell group. Now, many times, you know, believers uh, have uh, you know church people folks may not like it, right? Why should I be part of a church for one year? Because I already know everything, or they may say, uh, you know, immediately put me into leadership. Uh, there are times that happens, right? Can you make me a leader immediately? So. We are very, that's why we have these guidelines. We let them know that, hey, that's wonderful. But as a church, this is something that we do. So even after that, if we feel that, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, the cell members may come and say, you know, this person, he's, he's doing it this way. He's only, only he's speaking most of the time. And, uh, you know, he's not, uh, you know, letting us to go to the pastor and talk to the pastor. He's forcing us to share everything about, uh, you know, about our personal lives to him or her. Uh, if we get to know about it, right, through uh, uh, the cell group members, uh, first thing we do is call the cell group leader and talk to them, right? We uh, call the cell group leader, talk to them, ask them uh, what happened. Why, why do you feel this way why why is it that you are not giving others an opportunity why is it that you're uh, you know coercing people to you know only come to you uh, so we give them uh, uh, you know we let them know that this is not right and so in apc right this is apc okay kennedy uh, this is something that we follow we follow a two strike policy right uh, 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 so it's it's two strikes and then the third time uh, we take serious action, right? So the first time we talk to them, right? We uh, we talk to them. We ask them why why is it what is the, uh, what is the reason that you're uh, you know not letting others to discuss? We talk to them. Many times they'll say, "Okay, I didn't realize it that I'm doing this." Okay, I'll stop. Uh, or sometimes they may say, "No, I I don't." Uh, think I've done that. I've given everyone an opportunity. Uh, so sometimes people may justify it. So it's all right, right? But you let the person know that let's not repeat this. Give everyone an opportunity. Give everyone uh, freedom to go speak to any pastor within the church. Uh, don't control. Don't be. Uh, uh, you know. Don't hold them. Uh, uh, you know. Only they should only come to you, right? So we let them know. Now, if it continues to happen. We give them a warning second time. And we say, see, this is a warning. You've already been corrected. Second time, we're getting the same report from the cell members that you know you're not you're doing the same thing. Uh, so one more time, if this report comes, we will have to request you to step down from this role of leadership. Right? So that's how we handle it, Kennedy. So there are churches which have one strike policy. Two strike policy. There are people, uh, certain ministries that you know uh, they're okay with it. So, so this is something that we do at APC Kennedy. So uh, first we talk to them, uh, and then also while we talk, after talking to the leader, we also inform the cell group members that we have spoken, action has been taken, we have discussed about it, and and so. Um, you know, we we'll let them know that you know now you're free to you know uh, share your thoughts, share your discussions, uh, free to meet with any of them in the church. Uh, so we let them know, and then when they come back and report the same thing, then we take action. So that is your first question, Kennedy. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Do you have any other question?
Okay. Yeah. And the second part of your question, what is the difference between a cell church and a satellite church? Okay. Uh, it's a good question. Now, a cell church is a church which functions primarily out of the cell group. So everything that is being done is done through the cell group, right? Example, weekend school, foundations, uh, uh, you know, uh, even the Sunday celebrations can be within the church, communion, water baptism. Uh, everything is done through the cell groups. That's a cell church, right? Now, a cell church could have 20,000 people with 10,000 cell groups, right? It's not necessary. They all meet together at one place at one time. Not necessary. If they have it, it's good, right? But most of their programs and events are run through the cell group. That's a cell church, right? Uh, so, for example, there's a church with, you know, 1,000 people with 50 cell groups. So within that 50 cell groups, all the events and programs will happen. Now, the 1,000 people may meet also every Sunday, right? Uh, that's good, right? I hope you're getting what I'm saying. But the, most of the programs and events and studies, Bible studies, everything happens through the cell group. Now, a satellite church, for example, there's a there's a church or there's a ministry that is that has ten thousand people in the church. It's a huge church, right? It's a mega church. It's now they know that they can impact different cities, different parts of the nation. So what they do is they usually take up smaller spaces, right? So for example, there's a church in in one city, ten thousand people, but they know that. You know, uh, we can also reach out to these 10 other cities. So they probably hire a place, right? Uh, usually it's usually, okay, uh, not always, but usually it is college campuses or, uh, you know, s smaller office spaces. They hire the place. And here's what happens, okay, in a, a satellite church. Now, there are different kinds of satellite church churches. Right? I, I, I'll talk to you about some of them that I, I have read about, right? First one is the satellite church where from the main church, the mega church where 10,000 people, the Sunday sermons are watched on the big screen, right? So what happens is, so for example, the service starts at eight o'clock with worship, right? Here in the satellite church, there will be eight o'clock worship here as well, right? Uh, now, they are not streaming into the main service here where the worship is happening. Now, many churches follow the same set list also. The song list is the same. But they know, okay, 8 to 8.45 is worship. So there's worship here. There's worship here, right? Now, after that, there'll be probably announcements or whatever that has to be, you know, giving to the Lord, all of that. And then the Sunday sermon is watched via satellite through the main church. So there's nobody preaching here in the small church. Nobody's preaching, right? So there may be, for example, 150 people in this campus, smaller church, satellite church. So all, all of them are watching the Sunday sermon, which is being aired at the main church, right? But there will also be pastors and associate pastors, leaders in this small church. So, for example, the Sunday, the, they watch the whole sermon, right? It goes into ministry time. So then the pastors from this church will go be available to minister. And, and uh, you know, conducting a satellite church is quite, uh, is, is we, need, we need to be very meticulous, right? Because the timing must be exact. Now, there are some churches which follow the same song list and they follow the same structure that is happening in this church and even in the satellite church. Right? The same song list, same structure. Right? Uh, so basically, these satellite churches are offshoots or smaller churches. Now, we know that this, uh, you know, the main pastor, the pioneer of the church cannot come to this city but they would like to hear this pastor preach. So they have it on the screen through via satellite. They watch it, but they also have ministry teams. They have sound and setup. They have worship teams, volunteer teams, life groups. Everything is happening, 
right? Uh, but they are part of this mega church. And so it is convenient, right? Uh, and uh, it's something that at APC that we were also you know, discussing and we haven't really come to anything, but maybe uh, hopefully it's something that we can do, right? It's, it's wonderful, uh, satellite churches. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Kennedy. Okay, all right. Okay, let me just uh, present the notes. Okay, next one. Prayer and more prayer. Now, as a cell group leader, as a church, we must pray for each other. Pray for your cell groups. Pray every day. Pray regularly. Right? Uh, pray for your cell groups. Remember that prayer is the foundation of your ministry. Whether there's 10 people, whether there's 10,000 people, prayer is the foundation. And we must never, you know, I was reminded of this whole thing that happened in, in I think it's in the book of John where uh, Martha and Mary, uh, Jesus comes and visits them. And uh, I forget the chapter and the portion, but let me tell you that story. Jesus comes and visits them. Uh, Martha is busy doing what, you know, uh, uh, what is very important as well, right? Uh, making something, making some preparations for the, for the guests who have come, important. But Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Uh, was the preparation of the food important? Uh, yeah, she was being hospitable. She she knew that okay, when guests come, you have to you know uh, look after them well. But Mary was sitting at Jesus's feet. Now, what is the what is the main principle behind this? The main principle is sometimes we may get busy working. That could include doing things in the ministry that can stop us from spending time in the presence of God. And it's a dangerous thing, right? Because usually what happens is you, we, we start a church, we start a life group, we start praying earnestly. But as the ministry grows or life group grows, we have a lot of things to do, right, which are important. Uh, raising up leaders, uh, delegating responsibilities, all of that is important. But if I don't pray, if I don't spend time in God's presence, all these works, though it's important, will not be too effective because I've not spent time in prayer. So as leaders, as people who are in the ministry, pray, pray is the number one priority for us as believers. And out of that is the outflow of your ministry. The amount of time you spend in God's presence will show in your public ministry. It, it will show. Now, you may not feel it, but those who are there, who are listening to you, who are in your life group or in your church, in your ministries, they will know it. I don't think that they won't know. They will know it. You can easily find out. Because when we pray, we will experience the anointing of the Holy Spirit in everything that we are doing and saying. God will give us the wisdom to handle problems, to handle uh, challenges, to handle conflicts to uh, you know to share the word in wisdom to share a, uh, uh, the right word at the right time uh, right praying for members so you know you'll begin to see a work of God now what happens if we don't pray we can still do all of this and God will still work but we need to know that our ministry is an overflow of our time spent with God. A strong prayer platform in the church or in ministry provides the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Then there's protection, very, very important. 
you know, the enemy comes in different ways through different mediums, through through different tactics to bring us down as leaders. He knows that if I can get this leader, then the entire ministry is in shambles or the entire ministry can get affected. So what he does, he tries to bring troubles and, you know, difficulties. But the Lord will protect you and protect your ministry because you have covered it in prayer. Thirdly, is unity. Now, unity is something that cannot be forced on people. Only if you're united, I will share the sermons. Only if all of you are united together, um, you know, uh, the church will grow. We cannot force it on people. Unity is a uh, being united is a virtue. It's a character that it's developed. People watch it. People watch what's happening in the church. And by our prayer, uh, we pray, God, unite our members. Help us all to have one heart, one spirit, uh, to fulfill the vision that you have. All of a sudden, you'll see uh, that in the church, in the ministry, people are so united to each other. They're working together, and it's a wonderful feeling, especially as a pastor or a ministry leader. It's a wonderful feeling when you see the unity of the faith. Right now, that can come only through prayer because you're spending time in God's presence. Fourthly, when we pray, we'll see salvations, we'll see healings and miracles. God begins to pour out His Holy Spirit. God begins to you know, minister to people through healings and miracles. Our prayer that we have made for people in the in the church, in the life groups, can can break the hardest heart and bring people to Christ. Right? So as leaders, pray for specific goals, pray for specific things within the cell church or within your ministries. I pray specifically, God, I want to see this happening in the church. I want to see people united. I want to see people receiving. You know, many people are, are sick. They're going through uh, sicknesses for many years. Right? Their families are unwell. I want to see miracles. I want to see healings. I want to see testimonies. Right Now, many of them are being oppressed by the devil. God, I want to, I pray that you will protect them from the schemes of the enemy. Cover them with your blood. So what are we doing? We are praying specific goals for individuals, for the cell group, and for the church. So what is important for that? Individual prayer is important, but also corporate prayer. So what you can do is get people together in your cell group, in your church. Have prayers, extended time of prayers. Some of the things that we do at APC, we initially had the whole night of prayer. Then we had five days of prayer, fasting and prayer. Then we have 21 days of fasting and prayer. Uh, and so next month, uh, March 1st onwards, we're going to have uh, a month of prayer at the whole of the month of March. Uh, because prayer is what will you know take us through. Keep us safe, keep us strong, keep us focused on the vision and the mission. Right? So involve people in prayer. And now with uh, online, through Zoom and Google Classrooms, each of us can you know, really reach out and uh, you know, people can join online. And, uh, and prayer can be so much more uh, you know, effective, people coming together. And uh, you know, even this coming month in March, we're going to have it online as well. Thirty-one days of prayer, uh, just praying for the needs, praying for people, praying for the church, praying for things of God. Uh, so, what's happening? Your ministry is strong. Your life group is strong. Prayer is the foundation that can keep us going. And out of that comes, you know, reading the Word, meditating on God's Word. All of that is part of it. Right. right so. Have focused times of prayer meetings, spend time in his presence. If there are things that are stop sharing, if there are things that are taking most of your time. Oh, thank you for putting the chapter in verse there. Luke 10, 38 to 42. Yeah. If there are things that are taking your time uh, and you feel, oh, this is taking too much of my time, I'm not able to spend time in prayer, it's okay to step back for a while. Right. Uh, and 
you know, with leadership comes responsibilities, right? And those responsibilities must be done. Um, but don't, uh, for the sake of responsibilities and tasks and works to get done, don't sacrifice on your personal time with God, right? You may have to change timings. Uh, if you're praying in the morning, if you feel praying in the night is good, you can do that. Or even in the afternoon, if you feel that's a possibility, do it. But you know, your focus is not just doing the works, but praying for the ministry that God has given you. Right now, you may be part of the church. Um, you may not be a pioneer in the ministry. You may be just a leader in the church or even an associate pastor in the church. you got to pray for the ministry. Now, you have 12 people under you or whether you have 100 people. Pray. For the anointing of God, for the protection, for the unity of the faith, and for working of miracles. Right? And that's when, when we do that, we will see the fruit of the ministry. It's always beautiful to see fruit in everything that we do. So, uh, so any questions? I thought we'll stop today. Uh, we'll pick up from next week. Uh, I know this is just a short class, but we'll pick up from next week. Uh, any questions? Any thoughts? No questions. Okay. All right. Let's just close in prayer. Uh, let's just thank the Lord. Uh, take maybe a, two minutes. Thank the Lord. Two, three minutes. Thank the Lord for everything that He's doing in our lives, for the ministries, for the for the opportunities that He's given us. And let's pray and say, God, I thank you. Uh, pray for each one of us here that God will, uh, you know, use us for His glory. And uh, in everything that we do, prayer will be the center. And Jesus will be the center of our lives, of our ministries, families. Uh, so maybe one of us or two of us can pray and then we'll close. Yes. Can any two of us can pray and we'll close? Go ahead. Father God, we bless you for the wonderful class that you had today. It's by your grace, it's by your mercy. You have teach us a lot of miseries and uh, God, we know that you love us and uh, you want to transform our lives through knowing this sales group and how to save you in small areas. God, we bless you because you have given our Pastor Paul uh, wisdom and uh, knowledge to teach us so that we can be good leaders impacting the kingdom. God, we pray, we pray that everyone among us is going to understand this secrets of the kingdom and let your kingdom be expanded for your glory father we thank you because you are good and you are loving god and we pray that all that you have learned today to put into, into practice and holy spirit you're going to make us in the impacting lives of uh, of surroundings people through this sales group and the small churches god we praise you because you are mighty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Yes. One more person can pray. Close. Gracious Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your favor and your love. Lord Master, which is brought upon our life, oh, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the for your blood is washing us and cleansing our sins and strengthening us, oh, Father God, in the midst of our weaknesses, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for teaching us such a oh, Lord Master deep revelation. I pray that, Father God, let it be, Lord Master, helpful for each one of us, not only in our ministry, but in our personal life, oh, Father God. So that we can able to so much tune and father god with the holy spirit and with your word of father god give us more grace in these days of father god that we can able to dwell in your word and dwell in your presence so that we can be more fruitful and useful for your purpose and for your kingdom of oh god thank you father god for your servant lord master strengthening him strengthening his family we thank you for Lord Master, all the people who are there with us, Father God, and you are blessing their families and their ministries, O God Master. Once again, I humble before you and I, I thanking you for everything what you're doing in each one of our life, O God. In Jesus' most holy and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Shri Kumar. Thank you, Hope. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead, and I'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. God bless.